What up, Dokoners? Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 are set to drop on Global Dokkan in a couple of days, so it is time to talk about should you or should you not summon for Gamma 1 and Gamma 2. Now, these types of videos can get very long-winded. They can take forever, where you're just beating around the bush, trying to, you know, cater to all the different types of players out there. But I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible. Number one, I know that there are different types of players. I understand that there are different circumstances. I know that different players want different things. Different characters are more important to them. So if you know what you want, by all means, do what you want. Summon on what makes you happy and enjoy the game because that is the most important thing above anything else. Who cares if I say Trunks and Vegeta is better? Who cares if I say Gamma or Gohan Beast is a must have? If you want Resurrection F Saiyans, get them. If it'll make you enjoy the game more, get them, all right? So that being said, I'm going to give you my own thoughts and opinions on what I think you should do. You don't have to listen, but also feel free to share your own thoughts in the comments down below, because above all else, if players come to this video and they don't know what they want and they see useful comments in the comments section, that could be exactly what they need to go in the direction that they want. So I urge you guys to post your own thoughts in the comments down below. I've seen you guys help each other out. Let's continue that awesome trend. Thank you, Tunes. Now, let's jump in and start with the basics. Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 are ridiculously, stupidly good units. We know that, right? Gamma 1 is among one of the best units in the entire game with the ability to guard damage reduction, insane stat boosting at the same time, amplifies that damage reduction even more. Why wouldn't you want this character? This unit is very good. It does it all. You combine that with Gamma 2, you've got a lethal Shaq and Kobe-esque slot 1, slot 2 dynamic duo. These guys are really, really, really good together. I think that's the first time I've ever said Shaq and Kobe in a Dokkan video. Anyway... They're really good. Why wouldn't you want them? You've also got Trunks and Vegeta coming up sometime down the line. We don't know. This is just a placeholder schedule. I often reference this, but, you know, given how Dokkan likes to blow up my schedules all the time, this could very well end up in flames as well. But, you know, Trunks and Vegeta have to show up at some point. So wouldn't you want them? They can do it all. They're able to do everything. They lead literally, I think, the biggest category in the entire game, which is Bond of Parent and Child. So big, in fact, this category also holds the Kid Goku, which I didn't even realize. Kid Goku is a part of that banner. This guy right here, which I don't really know how, unless they're referencing the bond between Kid Goku and Grandpa Gohan. But anyway, that's besides the point. This is a just a monstrous category. Insane abilities, permanent stacking, temporary stacking, sort of similar to the Gamma 1 and Gamma 2. Guard guaranteed initially, insane stat buffing, critical hit, insane damage reduction. Well, not damage reduction. But critical hit, gain, uh, launching multiple supers. So this unit can do it all and has type coverage against Cell Max, which is, I think, something that a lot of people consider when summoning for units these days. Oftentimes, people will say, this is the best unit in the game. That is the best unit in the game for the simple reason that it beats the biggest, baddest event in Dokkan at the moment. And right now, it's either Red Zone or Cell Max. Good news is this unit can do them all. Or do them all? Beat them all. <laughs> okay. They see you can beat them all. So why wouldn't you want to summon on this one? Who cares about Gamma summon on this? There's your catch 22. How can you sit there and say Gamma 1 and 2 are a must have when Trunks and Vegeta are not? This is one of the issues players are dealing with. So I'm going to give you my own take on this, okay? I think right now the debate is between Trunks and Vegeta and Gamma 1 and Gamma 2. Factoring in the fact that we do not know what is coming up in Heroes, I think a lot of people can easily skip this simply because... Oftentimes, the hero's characters are very much focused on their own little niche categories. It's sort of a luxury item for a lot of different people. There could be the occasional gem or two where units function outside of the hero's category, like the units that support Goku's family, Vegeta's family at 40%. They were really good. Also, certain EZAs can function well. But for the most part, these guys are kind of in their own little space. So I think a lot of people can skip this. Kid Goku is also another one of those things where like in terms of category coverage might not necessarily cater to what you want. Although at the same time, Kid Goku does cover a lot of different categories. Team damage reduction is also insane, but there are certain requirements for other members of the team having to be like Bulma, Yamcha, Hachan. So that could limit your favorability on running that character. So out of everything else coming up, I think the debate is between Trunks of Vegeta and Gamma 1 and Gamma 2. And like it or not, you just can't summon on every single banner. Like, if you are on a budget, you can't do it. Because this is, of course, under the assumption that you don't have, like, nano-level luck and you get everything right away, right? Like, if you pull every single unit on every banner, you're fine. This video doesn't even apply to you. But if you don't have that, because you're a normal human being and you have normal luck, then you're probably not going to be able to get every single unit that you want, even if you spend a considerable amount of stones on them. So I think the debate is between Gamma 1 and 2, Trunks and Vegeta, and then, of course, the imminent Gohan Beast. We have no clue 
when Gohan Beast is going to be appearing. But a lot of people are of the theory that when Gohan Beast ultimately appears on Dokkan, it will feature Gamma 1 and Gamma 2. Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 are, of course, superhero characters. Could be a very nice, sensible way to bring them back. But then that also begs the question, how much of a time difference would there be between Gamma 1 and 2's release and Gamma 1 and 2's return on that Gohan Beast banner? And that's the question. Can you let yourself wait for however long it takes for Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 to come back on the Gohan Beast banner? Because if you do, you're essentially saving all the stones that you would have spent for Gohan or Gamma 1 and 2 on this banner on a banner where they're not even the focal point and you'll probably get more copies of them even faster, right? So that is a very important thing to remember. And I think that it is a valid point. So if you guys are on the fence about Gamma 1 and 2, then chances are you probably don't need them for any particular reason other than the simple fact that they're so busted. You want to just, you know, blaze your way through all the different events out there. I think you might be able to hold off and save until eventually Gohan Beast shows up. Legends has been the first to usher in the new era of superheroes. So Gohan Beast in Dokkan isn't too far off, in my opinion. That being said, whether Gohan or Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 even appear there wouldn't even be relevant because Gohan Beast would then be the new must-have in Dokkan. So I think you guys should save on Gamma 1 and 2. Don't summon on this banner. If anything, if Trunks and Vegeta emerge before we get any information on the Gohan Beast banner, then some people might invest a few stones on that one because while the unit is really good, the banner is a little bad. So that might also deter you from summoning. And if that ultimately you know prevents you from summoning, then so be it. Then you will have even more stones to summon for Gohan Beast. So I feel like that's the way to go. But of course, if you have your own thoughts, opinions, feel free to share them. I know that this is not maybe the most ideal answer for some of you, but that's how difficult of a situation it is on global. I apologize that I can't give you a more straight arrow answer like than that, because there's just too much uncertainty. What's going to be in the part one of Christmas? Are we going to be getting this same exact banner that JP got for Tanabata? Are we going to be getting this on global? during December? Are we going to be getting this into January? Where the heck are the Resurrection Fs going to be showing up? Resurrection Fs, I feel like by default, sort of fall off in terms of relevancy. But then again, like certain people have been wanting them because they like Resurrection F. I like Resurrection F. I had been waiting for Resurrection F. And now like this is not even in the top three of the units that I want. I want Gohan Beast. I want Trunks and Vegeta. I have been seeing all of the JP players beating all these different events with free-to-play teams with Trunks and Vegeta. I want this unit even more so than Gamma 1 and Gamma 2. So for me, I'm prioritizing him. Let's not even forget the Legendary Summons. There's just too much here. How the heck do you pick? Like, what, what do you do? What video could possibly tell you what the right answer is? Nobody can. But hopefully I gave you a little bit of ways to think about it. Like I said, just give yourself a checklist. Is Cell Max your priority? Is Legendary Goku event your priority? Is there a certain event that you are trying to do? Is there a certain team you're trying to assemble? Make that your number one criteria when summoning for these characters. After that, they can be sort of afterthoughts. Like if that is not something that you need at the moment, you can probably hold off. We've got special pose and artificial life forms, both being categories that are now eligible to take on Cell Max, which means as soon as these units drop on Global Dokkan, those other teams like Ginyu Force, Androids, will be able to beat Cell Max at a much more consistent rate. Do you need Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 as a result of that? Do you need them if you can win with Ginyu Force? Probably not, but you probably would still want to summon for the simple reason that they are new, they are shiny, they are cool. So try to take some time to think about that. Separate the wants from the needs. That could help you guys out ultimately in making your decision. I apologize if I couldn't give you anything more straightforward than that. It's the best I got. All right, there you have it. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like down below. Let me know in the comments your own personal thoughts and experiences on these sorts of situations. Which unit would you summon for? Why would you prioritize one over the other? What is your list? What is your top three list? Like, where do you where do you rank everybody? Is it Gohan Beast at the top? The theoretical Gohan Beast? Is it Trunks and Vegeta? Because we know what he does. Is it Gamma 1, Gamma 2? What do you guys think? And let me know in the comments down below. Also, be sure to subscribe for more dope content of the future and click the notification bell so that you'll let you're going to see more of my stuff. Do it. Thanks again. Stay tuned. Good luck to all of you in making this decision. And always remember to Dokkan responsibly.